Hello and welcome to the Defending Guide for Operation Neptune. If you missed the attacking guide for this map that was already made, it was 17 whole minutes of quite a bit of information, I think. This guide should be shorter because there is some overlap with that first video by nature of it being on the same map, but there is plenty to go over for defending. As usual, timestamps will be in the description for skipping around. I will reiterate in every one of these videos, I think, war is not about staying alive, KD is not tracked, it is all about team composition strategy, switching to the right class at each part of the map, and working together as a team. Well, here we are back at the beginning of the map, but on the other side, holding off the invasion. I think this stage will be the longest part of the video by far. As we all know, the first objective is to gas tank new of and and one, new 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 new. If you're confused about how to do that, well, I am too. But I know a lot about defending the cliff bunkers, which is typically the only objective for this part of the map, so I'll talk about that. Yeah, there's just some funny bug that seems to happen sometimes if you spawn in late. Anyway, you may as well start with a suggested class build. As always, for all the loadouts I show, I'll be recommending very generic types of weapons and telling you what I think is actually important here. I don't expect you'll be copying everything you see. Like, I'll never tell you to use the bar or the PPSH, because the guns will be rebalanced over time, and you may have different things unlocked, and you may be working towards different camos, all that stuff. Okay, when you spawn in to defend the bunkers, I will recommend that you absolutely use a sniper rifle with the mountain division. Even if you're in the B bunker and only plan to use the mounted guns, you should still have a sniper with the mountain division. You might think that sounds dumb, because wouldn't you want to be able to hop off the gun as soon as you see the bunker become contested and try to fight the guy who just came in? Well, the reason I'm recommending this is because of what might be a bug I've discovered over time. You see, when you have a sniper with mountain and you're using these mounted guns, people's red names pop up everywhere, making them very easy to pick out from the big crowd of bots, just like the sniper sharpshooter ability, and also just like what the lookout basic training does. But I've done a bunch of testing, and lookout isn't the thing doing that. Lookout didn't help that far away. I used the mountain division with the lookout training, but holding an SMG, and I couldn't see anybody's names anymore. Then I used a sniper with mountain and got rid of lookout, and it went back to working again. Although lookout does appear to help at closer range when people are rushing past you, this clip is with an SMG and lookout only, the names often pop up even through the metal of the mounted gun, which makes it pretty easy to hop off the gun and deny the guy coming up that ladder. Yeah, I imagine he wasn't too happy about that, so that's why I left lookout on here, but you don't need it to spot people far away. All you need to make those red names show up is mountain and a sniper in your hand. And I mean it when I say in your hand, the names did not appear if I got on the gun while holding the machine pistol, you need to hold the sniper, which is why it seems like some sort of bug with the sniper sharpshooter ability working on the mounted guns, despite not holding my breath, obviously. So that's maybe a pro tip, maybe a bug? I don't know. If it no longer works at some point, then no need to hold a sniper anymore, unless you actually want to snipe over in the A bunker, which is very effective as well. Same thing with the sharpshooter ability revealing all the actual players, no need to waste your time with the bots. You're much more likely to get counter sniped doing that in the A bunker, though. That is until everyone catches on to my epic carabine line of sight strategy thing over by B, cause that's OP as hell. Every time, without fail, that spot has allowed me to wipe out all the gunners very quickly and keep them off those guns. And if just a couple people on my team are going to take B, we get it every time. As a defender though, if you get killed by someone using that spot, hasn't happened to me yet, but you can counter them, just shoot through the cover. You can definitely kill somebody using that spot. I don't know why nobody ever watches the kill cam and comes back to get me. Well, hopefully as a defender, you only have to deal with those lame bolt action guys sniping from the back of the water because they only ever get hit markers and you can just hop off the gun to get your health back. Anyway, that's the idea with this class. Just to take a look at some other basic training ideas. As I said, I left Lookout on here to help with revealing people at closer range. I thought Instincts might be fun for telling you when you should hop off the gun, but it never really ended up being that helpful. I also thought maybe Rifleman, so that you can have an SMG as a secondary for when people start invading the bunker, but because you need to be holding the sniper for the trick to work, you don't really have enough time to swap and react usually if somebody is already in the bunker. And I'm happy to be working on my pistol challenges, the machine pistol isn't bad at all, but maybe Rifleman is a good fit for you. Now the final piece of this class, this is the first time I'm hesitating to give a tip, because these mines are very annoying. You can avoid them by going prone, and you can survive them with Hunker or Tier 4 Armored, but for me they've gotten a kill every single time. Maybe because the noise they make isn't as distinct as it has been in previous games, and maybe because the player base is new, but these mines are really good, and they basically give you an extra life, stopping someone from sneaking up on you. I'm almost always defending B, so I just plop it down near the stairs area here to catch anybody who came up that ladder flank route, and it has gotten a kill every time. So as much as I fear seeing more of these mines in-game, they are pretty good. 
Don't know why it seems like nobody uses them right now. I assume maybe they're way more common in Search and Destroy, but so far I've only played it a couple times for daily orders. Well, it feels like I took forever with this class, but I guess that's because I more or less went through a lot of the strategy at the same time. If the enemy team isn't very objective-oriented, you could easily win the game right here. After the first couple minutes, the bots have pretty much all gone, and then you can just pick off enemy players using these guns for the remaining four minutes, and they'll have a much harder time pushing up. I have several 20 and 25 kill streaks just from sitting on the guns. I like protecting B, but if both bunkers are kind of full, don't forget about playing the little hut position in the middle. It can be very boring, which is why maybe people avoid it, but build up those walls at the very least, and it's great to have somebody here to take out the people rushing in on both sides, or at least call them out for the people in the bunkers. Like, hey, somebody got to the ladder on the B side. Very helpful. Or maybe run espionage to tag people that you don't finish off if you don't want to say anything. Another great thing you can do from the middle is steal the enemy flamethrower. As I covered in the attacking video, the attackers get a flamethrower thrower drop somewhere in the trenches as soon as the first charge gets detonated, but if their team isn't very coordinated, that charge was probably set off by just one guy, and he might get killed after, or he might just run straight to a ladder. The flamethrower in the trenches gets ignored way too often, so it's not a bad idea to run out there and grab it from them. The capture is very quick for both teams, so it's an easy grab even though it's out of bounds, just know that it's probably a one-way trip. You can then use it to defend the bunkers, or save it for defending the comms, but either way, at least they don't have it to help them take the bunkers. Finally, the A bunker, since I haven't said much about it, it's similar to B except it's much more open which allows for sniping and a nice view of the beach, and the ladder that they can build goes directly into it. You can place a charge at the top of the ladder to destroy it, but that seems like a horrible idea, you get shot every time, and it's very easy for them to build it back up in complete safety. Like you can try to destroy the B side ladder too with several grenades, but that takes forever and doesn't delay them very much. So the final thing I'll mention about this stage is that it's nice to have another class to switch to for close quarters combat. I like that sniper trick thing at the beginning, but after the bots are gone you don't need it as much, or if they're very good at pushing up and flanking around and start capturing the bunkers right away, I want to shift my focus away from the mounted guns towards having a good SMG to fight them off from the inside, with a throwable lethal item to retake bunkers instead of that mine. That's about all for defending the bunkers, use those guns, they're great, use that red name trick to ignore the bots, use the mines and your sound to kill anybody who tries to flank you, and if the enemy team doesn't coordinate their strikes and swarm the bunkers all at once, you might just win the game right away. If not, time to retreat to defending the comms equipment, and of course that automatic friendly artillery barrage will help you do that. Now at defending the comms, if you're going to win the game, you're probably going to do it here, not at the third objective. At least that's how things usually go in my experience. We can go through some classes and some different places you can hold, and well, there's nothing specific that you absolutely need. This is where I start to have fewer cool things to say. Attacking is generally much more interesting because there may be very specific reasons to run a certain tactical or lethal or a specific weapon. Like on attack, I could analyze what weapons were good at destroying these comms quickly, but defending is pretty much always about winning gunfights to keep people away and that just comes with practice. All I can show you is an overview of the map and some ideas. By now you know all the basic trainings that everyone loves for combat. Primed, Hustle, maybe Lookout, Espionage is still pretty good, especially if the whole team is running it. Maybe Concussed for double frags, or Hunker to survive explosions, unless you just run armored like I am here, to also resist those tacticals and flamethrowers in case they saved one from the beach. I didn't feel like I needed Airborne because I don't need to run as much or be stealthy as a defender. I will mention Gunslinger as something often ignored, generally isn't very useful, fire guns while sprinting and diving, but it is fun also when used with the flamethrower. I think it was more fun in the beta. I might be imagining it, but I feel like you could run at full speed while shooting the flamethrower before. Now it does slow you down, unfortunately. But yeah, the flamethrower does get dropped for defenders at this stage of the map behind the comms room. Good to make use of that. For weapon choice, well, close quarters SMGs and even shotguns excel in the very confined communications room. You could use those to guard those two brick entrances on the main floor. Grenades are great for that too. But depending on the position you play, you could go with an AR or even sniper in the top room to look out over that whole area, and a bouncing Betty to guard the entrance. You could even try a bipod LMG mounted on a barrel to guard the flank route. Definitely important that somebody is paying attention to that side, otherwise they can just keep entering through that top floor entrance and dropping down through the ladders. Those are the main positions people can play. So in terms of strategy, just try to fill in whatever position is being ignored by the rest of your team. If they're all swarming around the comms with SMGs, just try to guard that flank route and make 
sure the brick walls are rebuilt. If tons of people are just sniping by the flank road and the upper level, do the opposite and guard the comms. I can't give much other meaningful defending advice, you just have to adapt to the situation and win your duels. I find the last machine to go down is often this one tucked away in that tiny room, so the end of this stage of the map can often turn into a bunch of people crammed in there trying to block bullets and grenades. Hunker or armored is definitely great for that part. The final thing I guess I'll mention from the attacking video is yes, you can walk through those barbed wire barricades. Not as important as a defender to know that, but just in case you want to get past them, don't destroy them. As a defender, you want to keep them up to slow down attackers. Well, finally on to defending those artillery guns. And this is a part of the map where I have practically nothing to say that is different from the attacking video. You want a class that will help you win gunfights, whatever that is for you, and whatever that is in the current meta when you're watching this. Who knows how many adjustments they've made to weapons like the bar and trainings like primed. I also like surviving explosions. Unlike the attacking video, I went with armored over hunker because the speed and stealth of airborne is less valuable as a defender, and I'd rather have a basic training open. But with that flak jacket effect, you can stay alive near the guns for as long as possible, only instead of trying to plant, you'll be trying to hold people off and defuse. One fun trick I can mention is that there is a tank on the right side here that I accidentally walked into one time. Seems like more and more people are learning about it, but I still rarely see anybody use it because there's no prompt that directs you towards it. If you hop in, it'll automatically drive forwards into a position that allows you to overlook most of the battlefield. That can be handy if there are some pesky snipers on the enemy team, but I don't spend much time using it myself. Other than that, you could use mines, but I like being able to throw grenades into the rooms. Much easier than trying to plant a mine on the front side of the gun without getting shot. You could change up everything here though, go with an infantry assault rifle maybe, if you want to be playing outside the gun rooms and just taking people out. Anything you can do to hold people off is helping the team, but if you notice nobody is throwing themselves in there to defuse, maybe you should become that person. And even from a greedy XP perspective, why not? It's 500 points for a defuse. Overall, with this stage of the map though, as I've said, if they were good enough to get here, it's fairly tough to hold people off the whole time, especially if they focus on taking out one gun at a time. In the game, that I've played, A typically goes down first and then they shift their focus to B, and it's pretty difficult to stop that from happening, with there being only 15 seconds on the bomb timer, but it definitely can be done. Best of luck with that part. And that's it for the map. Hopefully you were able to hold them off at one of those objectives, probably the first or second one. In public matches where nobody knows what they're doing, this map is one of the more defender-sided ones, but we're only a couple weeks into the game, and I think as more people figure all these strategies out, for evenly matched teams that actually work together, I think every map favors attacking, and the game will eventually turn into who can win on attack faster. Nothing wrong with that though, and for now, with clueless public match people, you definitely have a good shot at holding them off. Well, I hope something in here has made you into a better war mode team player. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. Very quiet. We've just encountered a wild clickbaiter in its natural habitat. Back off! It appears to be practicing juggling some balls. I must be careful not to intercept the ball, or he may become aggressive. This genus of clickbaiter may try to accost me to like and subscribe, or even worse, try to get me to download a bullshit app for free COD points.